Let's take a look at my game two takeaways, and we'll start things off with Steph Curry. And the night that he had, he drained an NBA Finals record nine three-pointers, scored 16 of his game-high 33 points, and made five of his nine three-pointers in the fourth quarter alone to put away the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know what that tells me, guys? First of all, it tells me ability, which we already knew. But we're talking about killer instinct now. Steph Curry with the dagger in his mind, smelling blood in the water like a great white shark with some raw meat in the ocean. That's what Steph Curry had last night. Absolutely balled out. He's averaging 31 points, 8.5 assists, 6.5 rebounds in the first two games of the 2018 NBA Finals. These numbers are a strong jump, you may recall, from past finals that Curry has been in when Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala have won the finals MVPs and Steph Curry has not. So as of right now, and I don't think this is going to change, the Golden State Warriors are going to win the finals and Steph Curry will be the NBA finals MVP. And last night was a microcosm of the performance that he has had really in the entire postseason. Of course, had to deal with a few injuries here and there, but he's really catching his own now, and it's the perfect time to do that. Curry has scored or assisted on points or on more points in transition than the Cavaliers have scored as a team. So we're talking about 35 to the Cavaliers, 33 in the first two games there. So Steph Curry, absolutely exceptional play so far. You just got to sit back and enjoy what you are seeing. And I have that same mentality with this guy. LeBron James of the Cleveland Cavaliers continues his exceptional play. And this Cavs team has been the LeBron James show for the entire postseason. And the fact that this team is in the finals is unreal in of itself. It's perhaps an indictment on the play of the Eastern Conference this year. The fact that the 76ers went down to the Celtics is kind of amazing to me, and the fact that the Celtics made it as far as they did also somewhat surprising. And perhaps you could make the argument that the Eastern Conference is a little watered down. But let's put all that aside. LeBron James is coming off a 51-point performance there in Game 2. Last night might have been viewed as a disappointment, but that's the point. The fact that we view last night as perhaps a disappointment is symbolic of what LeBron James has been doing year in and year out, not just in the NBA postseason in general, but the, in these NBA Finals. Now, this Finals could be over, but you're not going to see this guy stop competing. He is the ultimate fighter, the ultimate competitor in this league. So if you need an ounce of intrigue, to keep watching this NBA Finals, let's say you're not a Cavs fan, you're not a Warriors fan, it's LeBron putting on a display of greatness, game in and game out. Maybe even the best player to ever touch a basketball after it's all said and done. So that's how I view it. I have no rooting interest in this NBA Finals. I'm not from Cleveland, I'm not from Oakland, I'm not from California, I'm not from Ohio, I'm not even close. So I am just from a general sports fan perspective sitting back and enjoying what is on display from LeBron James and the exceptional play. And that's all I'm really uh, just enjoying here uh, in terms of the Cavalier side of things because outside of LeBron James has not been all that pretty. More specifically with Jordan Clarkson of the Cavaliers and he has been getting shall we say, roasted on Twitter of late. Nick Wright saying, quote, I like Ty Lu and I think he's an underrated coach, but his insistence on playing Clarkson is just indefensible. He's simply horrible. Michael Lee of Yahoo Sports said, Jordan Clarkson might be the only guy in the league who doesn't care that he shares the floor with LeBron James. In the playoffs, Clarkson is just logging 4.9 points per game, shooting 30.3% from the field and 23.9% from downtown, all in 15.4 minutes per game. The guy had two points last night. Whew. Yeah, Jordan Clarkson's not really panning out here for the Cleveland Cavaliers at this point in time. And 
Not great timing either when J.R. Smith is getting MVP chance from the Golden State Warriors faithful and you're looking for some sort of cohesion with this Cleveland Cavaliers team and just not getting it right now. It's been the LeBron James spotlight for this entire postseason and it's going to have to continue to be that way as we go throughout Game 3 and Game 4, Game 5 if necessary. But if the Cleveland Cavaliers can't win a game when LeBron drops 51, what is the standard? Are we talking 60 points per game from James? Or is Kevin Love going to step up? You know, Hill, will he step up? Uh, Clarkson may have to absolutely turn around his postseason for the Cavaliers to actually have a chance in the rest of this finals here. So Cavs are down 0-2. They're going to Cleveland for Game 3. We'll see if they can turn things around. Those are the takeaways from Game 2. You're watching the Cam Rogers Show presented by AutoList. Are you looking for a new or used car out there? Are you tired of browsing a million sites? Save yourself the time. Head on to AutoList.com. Get that car shopping done in a flash or download their fantastic app for iPhone and Android users today. All right, let's get to the latest NBA rumors now because a lot of you guys are basically in the offseason, if you will. So Jason Kidd recently interviewed for the Pistons head coaching position over the weekend, according to Jordan Schultz of Yahoo Sports. Kidd spent the last three seasons as the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. He was fired 45 games into the 2017-2018 campaign after a 23-22 and 22 start. Not very good, and the Pistons continue their search after Stan Van Gundy was fired last May. And in terms of Van Gundy's resume, the last four seasons, the Pistons went 152-176 to 176 with one playoff appearance. They finished with a brutal 39-43 and 43 record in this past season. So Kidd, 45 years old, has five years worth of coaching experience with the Brooklyn Nets and the Bucks. of course. He is 183 and 190 in his career coaching total with three playoff appearances. So two more than the Pistons under Van Gundy here. So his only playoff series win did come in 2013 to 2014, his lone season with the Brooklyn Nets. And it was also reported that the University of Michigan head coach uh, Beeline was interviewed as well as Toronto Raptors head coach Dwayne Casey. So they're under consideration as well. Who should the Pistons hire as their next head coach? Hit me up in comments on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. They've got some talented pieces on that team. Andre Drummond, Stanley Johnson, I like them a lot. Veteran Blake Griffin is there as well. So there are some enticing players there that could perhaps lead to a big brand name kind of hire for the Detroit Pistons. And they're going through their due diligence right now. We'll see who eventually becomes the new head coach. All right, next on the list, do the Houston Rockets want Paul George? So sources have told Rockets Wire, which is the Houston Rockets affiliate from USA Today, that GM Daryl Morey is strongly considering making a run at George. That, and along with perhaps joining the LeBron James sweepstakes once that becomes a thing. And now, some salary cap magic would have to happen for the Rockets to land either George or James. And a max contract for James or George would likely come with a first-year salary of around $35 million. Houston currently is slated to have $85.1 million on the books for next season, with the salary cap projected around $101 million. That's also before incorporating Chris Paul's $35.5 million cap hold, which counts against them until he either signs a new contract with the team or he goes elsewhere. So here is the best route, really, with the Houston Rockets. In terms of going about either landing George or landing James. It's not going to be via free agency. It's going to be via trade. That just makes more sense to me. So that means George opts in for the Thunder and then tries to facilitate a trade. Same logic with LeBron. He opts in with the Cleveland Cavaliers, tries to facilitate a trade. Well, the Lakers, as you see on your reaction poll here, 
have the luxury of just shelling out a max contract and be like, hey, Paul, come on over to L.A. Because Magic Johnson really wants him. He's been vocal about that. And obviously, in terms of a financial perspective, it's a lot easier for the Lakers to land George than, say, the Houston Rockets. The Rockets have to get creative and perhaps have to go via a trade path rather than what the Lakers would get to do. Max contract, here you go. Paul, come on over to the Lakers. So it depends really on what George wants to do and how much grunt work he wants to put into his, into all of this. Does he want to opt in and facilitate a trade and go through that entire process like a Chris Paul did? Or does he want to just go out west, cash out, maybe he sees another big time ticket item player join the Lakers, or maybe it could be Kawhi in 2019, and maybe Paul George is assured that that will happen the following season. A lot of things are kind of going through uh, the mix here right now, and I think Paul George, outside of LeBron, one of the more interesting storylines as we enter this free agency period here in the NBA. All right, how about some Brian Colangelo follow-up news? Of course, the investigation is ongoing with the 76ers, According to the USA Today, Brian Colangelo's wife, Barbara, could be behind the tweets from the burner accounts allegedly used by Colangelo. So the USA Today wrote the following, quote, a phone number linked to the Twitter accounts ends with the same two numbers as a phone number associated with Barbara. So according to reports, the investigation against Colangelo is growing to the point where the 76ers may just sever ties with him. And even if Barbara is found guilty of going through all of this and setting out the tweets, that actually does not exonerate Brian Colangelo from all of this, according to reports out there uh, and some well-named insiders that are saying this. So certainly a fluid situation, and we could have a resolution to all of this by the end of the week where we could see Brian Colangelo unemployed, no longer the GM of the 76ers, so stay tuned on that. How about a Jimmer comeback to the NBA? He wants to join. So former NBA guard, of course, said on Friday that he will play in this year's The Basketball Tournament to perhaps stir up some NBA interest. And he said, quote, I would always love to get another chance in the NBA. I've gotten better in China and improved every year. He hopes somebody takes notice, and of course, he has played the last two seasons for the Chinese Basketball Association's Shanghai Sharks. Believe it or not, Jimmer's 29 years old now. Now, he's averaged 37.6 points per game for the Sharks back in the 2016-2017 season when he was named the CBA International MVP, and then averaged 36.9 points this past season, so... He's got a good resume, but he's also playing in China, so that's a little relative to all of this here. But he is looking for a comeback in the NBA. We'll see how he does in the basketball tournament, if that can kind of help his stock there to perhaps join a team. All right, let's go to some Lakers-ish notes here. So the Lakers don't want LiAngelo, at least that is the reports out there. The Lakers brought in Ball for a workout recently. But according to USA Today, the Lakers aren't interested in signing him at any level. So we're talking about not just the NBA, but the G League and the like. So in the Lithuanian Basketball League, Leangelo was averaging 12.4 points per game in 21.7 minutes. I will note, LeVar Ball said back in February that... Lonzo Ball would leave the Lakers if Leangelo and LaMelo were not signed. But let's keep in mind that LeVar Ball says a lot of things, so we will take that with a grain of salt. We're talking about a guy who got into a Twitter beef with the 45th president of the United States. So anything can happen, anything can be said, and maybe this is just a little bit of a smokescreen here. Like I said, this was back in February, so things can change, minds can change, and the like. So for now, LiAngelo Ball, not looking good for the NBA draft. But this guy, who he's going to be a high draft pick. Mo Bamba out of Texas. So sources are telling the Sporting News that the Celtics are reportedly interested in drafting Mo Bamba. Now, I will say a lot of Celtics insiders out there have been debunking this rumor. So this is you know, firmly in the 
leave it up to you guys to decipher discussion. The Celtics have the number 27 pick, but they do have a good amount of assets to move up if they want to. The Grizzlies at number four and the Mavericks at number five have made it clear they're willing to make a deal and move back. With Kyrie and Gordon Hayward coming back for the Celtics, you could make the argument, you could, that the role for someone like a Terry Rozier or a Jalen Brown reduces. I don't see them doing away with Jason Tatum. I think that'd be ridiculous after the postseason that he had. Dallas and Memphis already have point guards in Dennis Smith Jr. and Mike Conley, respectively, so they would almost certainly prefer Brown over Rozier, you would think. So keep that in mind, one of the premier draft rumors here as we are in the month of June and the NBA draft is not too far down the road. Mo Bamba could be going to the Celtics. We shall see. So that's the rundown with the latest NBA rumors.